How many people does it take to build a satellite dish? Find out today on this edition of SoCal Broadcast Engineer. Falling ice from the winter damaged the arms on the satellite dish and knocked it out of alignment. This prevented the audio streams from making it from the studio to the mountaintop site. The team assembles and loads all the gear we need for the trip, including safety equipment. Um, since we're going to be doing stuff, head protection. This is Christian's meal. And brimming with confidence, we hop into the truck and head over to pick up the new dish. Well. I feel just about as good as a hamster does being held by a three-year-old. Have a good day, guys. See ya. See you later. We've already purchased a replacement dish. Now, we just need to get it up to the site and hope it doesn't fly off the back of the truck on the freeway. See, I'm always lost in, at Home Depot because I am always distracted. I need to find straps. That's probably gonna be in the pool section, huh? 12 foot. Thank you for shopping at the Home Depot. You're so welcome. And thank you for thanking me. And thank you for watching. With the straps securely fastened and holding our cargo down, it was time to make the long, arduous Fire trip truck. up the mountain. They're eating mosquitoes. They're eating the mosquitoes. Ah. Chow down, guys. You hear that cracking? Yeah, I'm getting old. Well, welcome to our undisclosed location. Oh, what is like the, if you stand in front of it, it'll kill me place? <laughs> um, don't stand in front of the microwave dish. Okay. Which one is that? The big white drum up there. Okay. Okay. We unloaded the new satellite dish from the truck and Chad and Matt set up to start assembling the mount. While they were working on the new, I was working to remove the old. Before we get too far along, I need to explain more about how we get the satellite signal. Many, many miles in that direction, above the equator, what's called a geostationary satellite. And that satellite, it's going as fast as the Earth is turning. As far as we are concerned, always appears to be in the same spot in the sky. That's how we can have satellite dishes that are pointed in one direction, locked down, and they always receive their signal. It's, it's sending out its RF from the satellite and this part is the reflector, and that's taking this, the RF and reflecting it into here, the feed horn, which goes into the LNB, which basically converts from the frequency that the satellite is putting out to a lower frequency that we can send on a cable all the way back to our satellite receiver that's going to decode the audio and all the data. We are installing the mounting hardware that'll go on the back of the, the dish here. So we have to put all the pieces together. It comes with a couple of brackets and that arm. And so we gotta screw all those together, get them super tight, and then we can screw them on the back of here. Just trying to work on the hardware setup, make sure I got everything I need start installing these plates and cross arms and get those ready to put on the back of the, the dish right there. I did not come all this way to be insulted. If Matt would hold it up straight, I might be able to put this on it. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I was turning it the wrong way. <laughs> I got it almost all the way out, started turning it the wrong way, and um, was wondering why it was stopping. Let's try this again. This time, going in the correct direction. As the temperatures start climbing, and the reality of having to hoist that large dish onto the pole begins to set in, tension side. boils to, to the surface. Oh, you gotta line it up with the holes. Well, yeah, but just here, you just hold it on this side. Mac, get what? over here. No, I'm holding it up. You <laughs> stick it in. Hey, I don't need that lip from I, you. You're not my real dad. We were, we were adding tension to- Add more tension, go! The narrative of the Oh my story. gosh, this video's gonna be so boring if we don't have anything. I don't need commentary from- <laughs> The documentarian. I'm just, I'm just trying to poke the bear. Is that the term? This is a five and a half diam, five and a half inch diameter pole. I'm looking at the mount on the new dish. What? Let's make sure it. Let's measure it. Make sure it fits. Let's see here. Huh. Four and a half inches. We hit a snag. The mount on the dish is too small for the pipe. This means more time without this vital backup link for the audio feed, making a greater possibility of the station going silent. A silent station doesn't serve the public, doesn't generate revenue, and causes listeners to lose confidence in the station and tune elsewhere. Might have to order another mount because this one is set four and a half inch pole. That is a five and a half inch pole. Uh-oh. Stuff happens. If we had ordered the, the right part, maybe something else would have happened. So, you know, life's unpredictable. You just gotta have a good spirit about it and, you know, order the right part, come back and install it. Okay. So until then, to be continued. There's nothing left to be done with the dish today. We'll have to head home and order the right part and then return to finish the install and alignment. This is the broken one. We're gonna dispose of this guy in the proper receptacle. I don't know what the proper receptacle for fiberglass is, but I, I know a guy who could tell me. Before we go, we need to do a site inspection. So that means we need to take a look at our tower, basically make sure everything is okay. Take a look at the transmitters, nothing's overly hot, nothing's overly dirty. That is what a site inspection is. And that's what we need to do before we head out. What are you doing to my truck? I'm just following your instructions, sir. You told me to put something nice and personable on your truck, so I did. That's graffiti. Why would you graffiti my truck? I'm so sorry, sir. Do you see any other graffiti on there? Yes, on the other side, sir. No. Yes, look, sir. Well, you gotta clean that off. Okay, sir. Wash it off, use your drinking water. The spit shine? Spit. Sure. <laughs> this is my little path going down to the site and uh, to one of our guy anchors. And this this Christmas, we've got a cable with Christmas tree right here. Let's see if I can get down there without killing myself. Jeez, Marco. Wow, oh, dude. Wire. Watch out for the barbed wire. I'm stuck. There you go. Okay, now we can go this way. Barbed wire. Watch out for this guy, too. This guy's no fun. Yep, it looks okay. I mean, it's just gorgeous out here today. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's uh, pack up, let's head out. Let's see what kind of adventures we can get into and mischief we can get into uh, on the way down because I'm sure we're gonna find some way to get in trouble. All right, time to head out.
Bye. <laughs> We drove back down the hill towards home after a long, hot day up on the mountain. No matter how frustrating this job can be at times, there is always an amazing view to greet you when you get up to the top of the mountain. Sunny weather, stormy weather, middle of the night, there is always adventure to be had in the journey up and down the mountain. While we may have not been completely successful today, we did accomplish some of the work that needed to be done. Putting eyes on a transmitter site is the best way to make sure that the site is in good condition. Remote controls and sensors are great, but nothing beats the good old-fashioned analog eyeball. So, as we wait for the right parts to arrive back home, we move on to other projects and tasks that need our attention. Oh, and apple pie at the bottom of the mountain? It's always a welcome treat.